Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through just the basics of the time value of money and discounting. So let's say we have some money today, let's just say $10 and you can use dollars or whichever currency that you want. And I'm going to write here that we're at the time period T for time is equal to zero, which will be the present period for me. So that's like today. And let's say that the interest rate on deposits, we'll call that R, is 25%. So that's 0.25. And for this video, just to make it easy, we can just say it's per year. If we put our $10 in the bank then for the year, we can earn 25% of the value of our deposit in a year's time. So the future value, that's FV, of that $10 will be equal to, well, we have the $10, but then we can add to that the interest earned. So that's 0.25 or 25% of $10. Now 0.25 times 10 is $2.50. So the whole sum comes to, well, we have $10 plus $2.50, so $12.50. So we invest $10 today, we earn some interest on that money, and we get $12.50 in a year's time at t is equal to 1. And so the general lesson here is that we can invest money that we have currently and earn interest from that money. And it actually follows from this that a dollar today or whatever currency you have, that's worth more than if you gave me that same dollar in a year or more generally any time in the future. Because the dollar today I can invest and earn interest on, but I can't invest and earn interest on monies that I don't have yet. Now this concept that a sum of money that we get today is worth more than that same sum of money that is given in the future, this is called the time value of money. So let's be a little bit more abstract to get some algebra going. So just like the future value of our $10 is equal to, well, 10 plus 10 times the interest rate, I'm just going to say our future value, that's FV, of some present value that we have, and present value will be PV, is equal to that present value, so PV plus the present value times the interest rate R. And I can take PV out of some brackets here and we can get to the formula that the future value of some present monies that we have today is equal to the present value multiplied by one plus R. So that's our formula for the future value of some present monies that we have. So I'll make some space and I'll leave that formula here and also our definition about the time value of money. Uh, because the issue is that here our formula tells us about the future value of some present amounts that we have, but very often we need the opposite sort of relationship. We want to know how to value some future payment that will happen later on. So someone might say, for instance, hey, if you do this job for me or if you invest in this project or whatever, I promise that I will give you $100 or how, however much it is in like a year's time. Well, the question to ask, given the time value of money, is how much is that promise worth? How much is that worth to me now? And well, we know from the time value of money that the $100 in the future, in a year's time, it's worth less than $100 today, because if I had the $100 today, I could earn interest on that sum. So what we want to know then is the present value of that future payment, that future income. And it's pretty easy, actually. We can use the relationship we just found to find that exact relationship. So I know that the future value is equal to the present value times 1 plus r. If we just divide out 1 plus r, we get an expression for the present value of some future value, the future value of some payment that I will receive. It's equal to the future value divided by 1 plus r. And actually, sometimes it is useful to see this as the future value times 1 over 1 plus r. So I'll, I'll give the expression to you like that as well. And just to give you an example, so let's say uh, our future value is $12.50 $12 and the interest rate is as before, so 25%, so 0.25. You'll see the present value of $12.50 given in the next period or next year is 12.5 divided by, well, 1 plus 0.25 is 1.25 since the interest rate is 0.25 and that's all equal to 10. 
So that's exactly the relationship that we had before, but it's just a different perspective. We're understanding how we can value some monies or a payment given in the future, given the time value of money. Now, it's also interesting to note that the time value of money here, it really implies that in this case, I would be indifferent between receiving $10 today and $12.50 one period ahead. That's one perspective that we can have on this situation. Now, importantly, when we're finding the present value of some future amount that, that we will get, we often talk about discounting future values back to their present values. So that's the language that you'll hear around this sort of activity as well. And this is actually a good segue to the next little topic, which is that it's also very common to talk about discounting in terms of what we call a discount factor, which is why I rewrote our present value formula this way with the one divided by one plus R multiplying our future value, because it happens to be the case that a discount factor is the number that we multiply our future value values by in order to discount them back to the present value. So in our example, if we were going to be talking about discount factors, well, it would be one divided by one plus R. This would be our discount factor that counts as the number that is multiplying our future value. Uh, I'll call it delta. So I use the Greek delta symbol. Your textbook might have a different notation. And so if we use discount factors, we would say that the present value to be received one period ahead will be equal to that future value multiplied by the discount factor. So these are just equivalent ways of doing exactly the same thing. And with our example that we worked with before, the discount factor would be equal to, well, one divided by one plus 0.25, that was our interest rate, that's equal to 0.8. So our discount factor would be 0.8. Now, this is the most simple case, I, I will say, really where the discount factor just depends on the interest rate. If you do any finance or any higher level economics, you'll see that actually things can get more complicated here in terms of what we put in the discount factor. In terms of our simplest case though, this is enough to start with. Now, the last thing we need to think about, it's probably the most important thing, is that we need to understand what we need to do if we want to discount more than one period ahead. So often we'll have like a stream of payments going off into the future and we need to know how to evaluate that stream of payments today given the time value of money. Now it's a good question. It is best to see this first from the perspective of finding the future value of some present monies but we'll do it two periods ahead. So recall our formula that we started with, the future value of a present sum of monies is equal to that present value multiplied by one plus R. Now this formula implicitly only counts one period of interest. So one, one period ahead. We're only multiplying our present value by R, the interest rate once. If we allow for two periods of gaining interest, so two periods ahead, we're going to multiply everything again by one plus R. So we're still keeping that amount plus interest gained in the first period. That's multiplied by one. We're still keeping that because we've got that. But because we're investing again in a second period, we're multiplying it all again by R. We're earning interest a second time, not just on that present value, but the present value plus the interest earned in that first period. And this actually all simplifies to the future value, and this will be for two periods ahead, is equal to the present value multiplied by one plus R to the power of two. And hopefully you can see that if we were thinking about three periods ahead, we would multiply everything by one plus R again to account for that third round of interest. And that would mean that we raise that bracketed term one plus R to the power of three. If we were four periods ahead, we would raise that one plus R to the power of four. And actually, in general, the future value of some present value is equal to that present value multiplied by one plus R to the power of T, where T is equal to the number of periods ahead that we want to evaluate that future value. And so that's our general formula for the future value of some present monies that we have for any time period ahead, any T. And this is true when we have what we call compound interest, when we can earn interest, not just from the principal amount, so from that present value of monies that we started with, but also from interest accumulated from previous periods.
Now I should say you can also get more complex cases where for instance, the number of times the interest is accrued is different from the number of periods that you have. So, so this is really just the most basic case. Now we can use this formula though to get a kind of sister formula for the present value of some future money that we will get for any time t. We're just going to divide both sides by one plus r to the power of t. And once we do that, we see that our present value is equal to our future value divided by one plus r to the power of t. Or alternatively, our future value times one divided by one plus r to the power of t. Recall that our discount factor was equal to one divided by one plus r. And also note that we can easily rewrite this expression here. So we can bracket that whole term on the right hand side of that future value. So one divided by one plus r, if we bracket that to the power of t, that's an equivalent way of writing one divided by one plus r to the power of t. Uh, it's just the same when the t exponent distributes you know, one to the power of anything is still equal to one, so, so it's fine. Uh, but it just clearly shows that we can substitute in our delta here, our discount factor, uh, and we can get another formula that you may have seen, which is that the present value of some future amount received is equal to the future value of that amount times the discount factor to the power of t. And again, t is just the number of periods ahead where you're going to receive that, that amount of money. So we have a few formulas here that we can use in order to connect our future and our present value of monies given the time value of money. So that's it for this video. I hope that it did help. Please let me know if you want anything more on this subject, like some examples. Um, actually, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I'm going to uh, connect this to the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, infinitely repeated. So that's that's really the reason why I'm doing this. I don't usually venture into finance stuff and this is a big topic, but I needed something to support my discussion on infinite prisoner's dilemma, if that makes sense. Um, but if, if you're not coming because of the prisoner's dilemma, if you're just here because I, I hope the video was useful, basically. If it was, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching my stuff. You can also check out my website, uh, www.econhelp.com.au. There's increasingly more and more stuff up on that site, like courses that I've um, created so you can practice some of the stuff that, that I talk about in these videos um, and hopefully more stuff over time as well. But, um, okay, that's it. Have a good one, everyone.